All right, guys, it's an exciting moment in the AdventureWorks world because we are about to wire up our data model and create our table relationships. So in Power BI Desktop, there are two common ways to do this. Option number one, which I prefer, is to simply click and drag to connect your keys in the relationship view. So it's as simple as clicking on a foreign key, dragging the mouse, finding its primary key match, and releasing to create that relationship. Very, very simple, very straightforward, also a very visual way to create those relationships. The second option is to add or detect relationships using this Manage Relationships dialog box. So same idea here, just a little bit more manual. You would manually select the two tables that you'd like to relate, as well as the primary and foreign key columns. So without further ado, let's head into Power BI and add these relationships. All right, so here I am in the relationships view, and I'm gonna show you the slow way to create a relationship first, and then we'll never do it that way again. I'm gonna use the Manage Relationships button in the Home tab. And as you can see, I have a couple options here. You can choose Auto Detect and basically say, I don't know what my relationships are gonna look like. Why don't you analyze the tables and tell me? Whenever I've played with it, it usually gets some of the relationships right, but misses others. So let's go ahead and disregard the Auto Detect option. And we're gonna add a new relationship manually. And we're gonna connect our sales table to our customer table. So AW sales to AW customer. And without even clicking on a column, Power BI automatically identified the foreign and primary key, that customer key column that matches these two tables together. And it gives us a little bit of information about the cardinality and the cross filter. We're gonna talk about both of those in depth, as well as this make relationship active option later on this section, but for now that's good enough. We'll press OK and close. And there you go. We've created our first table relationship between sales and customer lookup. And you'll see as you hover over this relationship line, it kind of highlights what the key column is. So you see that box around the customer key. So that's option number one, the manual way. The easier way is to click and drag. So to connect calendar to sales, I'm just gonna grab my order date and we'll talk about whether or not to use order versus stock in a little bit. But for now, let's focus on order date. And we're gonna click and hold the mouse and just drag up and release it over the date field, which is our primary key in the calendar lookup. And there you go, we've created our second relationship. Same story with territories. Let's grab that territory foreign key, drag it up to the sales territory key in the lookup. And now before I connect up the product lookup, I wanna return back to my report view for just a second and remind you that we had been looking at order quantities and trying to break them down by product names to no avail. Because remember, without the relationship, these two tables are essentially islands that can't talk to each other. But now when we go back to relationships, grab that product key, drag it up to our product lookup and Oh, it's gonna be tricky. There it is, product key. Created the relationship and now drum roll please. We go back to report and look at that. We've got correct values for quantities broken down by product name. And again, this could be any field from the product table. All by simply dragging our mouse, making a couple clicks and creating that relationship between the two tables. So let's hop back into our relationships view and I'm just gonna drag things around a little bit. You don't have to organize things exactly like I am. It really doesn't make any difference. Now, I'm gonna hold off on these two tables. We're gonna talk about these in the next lecture. And actually, I'm gonna rearrange it's kind of in a hierarchical way. Product, subcategory, and category. But for now, we're good to go. So congratulations, we've officially just built an AdventureWorks data model.